start my podcast is no longer a way that I can't start my podcast. <laughs> my name hasn't changed. No. Um, so hi, welcome to the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Carmen and this is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and I would usually say in my journey towards becoming a full-time crochet and knitwear designer. And I think it still is accurate. But um, technically, I already am a full-time knitwear and crochet designer now. But um, I just hope I can keep it up because <laughs> I just hope so. So um, I am having some vanilla Coke. I know this disgusts a lot of people, but I love vanilla Coke. As I explained in my last podcast episode, I quit my day job, therefore I am now a full-time knitwear and crochet, crochet designer, uh, but it is by no means sustainable yet. So I still, I still have a long way to go if I want to make this business work, and so it's still a journey, I would say. I mean, it's always a journey, right? Whenever, when is the journey ever over? So, uh, don't answer that. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess I could still say I'm on a journey. Anyway, so, um, I have been self-employed now for a month, and it has been great. It is so great. Um, it is Monday now, and Monday, just every day, is great now like I don't have the Monday blues anymore or the oh Wednesday oh it's almost the weekend or like oh, I just yeah every day feels like a weekend but then the weekend is actually a weekend because I don't have to work or I'm making myself not work and by having actual free weekends now I'm reminded that I did not have a free weekend for years, um, but still I did what I love to do, so don't feel bad, but um, yeah, it's just great. <laughs> I'm sorry, a hashtag not sorry, um, yeah, but I just can't help but gush over this new lifestyle. I mean, I'm really, really loving it. And I'm working my ass off to make sure that I can continue to do this because I would really, really love that. Okay, now let's get on with the podcast. So I have a couple of projects to show you. No finished objects. No, I did finish a thing, but it's a secret thing and it's no longer in my possession because I had to send it off. Um... So you'll be saying that in a couple of months. Uh, yes. What did I want to, sh to tell you? Yes, I am wearing my No Frills sweater with my Lucy and Yak dungarees and a pin, also from Lucy and Yak, that says Resting Stitch Face. I thought that was very funny. Uh, yeah, so my no frills sweater, I finished that this year and I've knitted out of Debbie Bliss, I would say. Debbie Bliss. It was a tweedy kind of yarn. Was it Donegal something? Yeah, I don't remember. But it was Debbie Bliss uh, with Stranded Dye Works mohair. Um, do I remember the colorway? It was a very, like, dark gray colorway. What was it? I don't remember, I'm sorry. But I do have all the correct information on my project page, so um, if you're interested, just... Um, Go and check that out. Um, I'm really obsessed now with um, mapping all of my projects on Ravelry. Uh, uh, 
recording now I'm just writing down everything um, it's especially handy for when you forget which needle size you're using for a project uh, or which size you're knitting or you know when you when you're frogged when you have frogged something it's just it's very handy um so yes and I am tagging all projects with whip or uh, 2019 fo or 2018 fo and it's really nice so uh, I have about 17 whips right now um, but let's not uh, get into that too much so uh, my first project is actually a very very long languishing whip one that <laughs> some of you will know really well uh, looking at you, my aunt. <laughs> and they are my Christmas socks. They are still a whip. Here is one of my Christmas socks. I do love them. I do love them very, very much. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned the um, designer and the yarn dyers uh, before. I'm really bad about doing that, uh, or, or about not doing that, but the designer is Renée Kies. I will put her name on the screen, Renée Kies, and these are the O Denebaum socks, uh, which means O Christmas tree, and it's um, the title of a Christmas song. Um, and it's really, really cute. Um, I modified the... Uh, of the first sock a little bit by adding more I don't know if you want to call these snowflakes but more flex in between so that my floats uh, wouldn't be that long but um, I was knitting so tightly that I had to increase significantly for or not really increase just also my gauge has just changed miraculously but um, yeah a lot of changes were made because I just could not fit it over my um, ankles. I have knit a garter stitch heel. It is the German short row heel but then garter stitch. Just follow the exact same tutorial. I have one on my channel. It's called uh, how to knit a German short row heel, but just uh, instead of purling, just knit everything. That was the first sock. You will have seen this before. And now I did already start the second sock. And I was, I had just finished one Christmas tree, I think, one row of trees. And now I have three. Yay! So I'm really, really happy about this, and also the fit is so much better. Um, I think it's just because my gauge has changed. So, I don't know if you can see it right now, but it is significantly uh, bigger, and I'm really, really happy about that. Um, so the yarn I'm using, I think I forget to mention this every time. Um, the green one, oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful green, uh, called Avocado by Wol met uh, so from uh, Sylvia. Wol met Verve. It's really, really beautiful. Um, and this is Hedgehog Fibers in Where's My Bike? And that was a custom colorway for Stephen and Penelope. And possibly one of the very first indie dyed skeins that I owned. Uh, so yeah, this has been in stash for a long time and then on the needles for a long time because these socks have been in the making since three years. I wanna say, I think it was 2016, I think. Yeah, and I'm really happy to finally be using this yarn. And I keep admiring how well this yarn cake is wound. And I think I had it wound at the shop at Stephen and Penelope. But what did I say? At Stephen and Penelope. <laughs> um, 
I just think it's so pretty. Yeah, and I did buy another skein. I see right there. I did buy another skein at the same time. It's kind of this electric blue with a purple, uh, purple, uh, not flex, but areas. Uh, and I'm hoping to use that for a fade sweater sometime because I am assembling an awful lot of um, purple-ish yarn. Um, so yeah, hopefully I can use that for a fade cardigan. But yeah, this is one one of the skeins I got at that time, and possibly my very first indie dyed skein, which I'm very proud of. Um, and yeah, so I'm using those uh, for this pair of socks, and I am loving it. Um, I have done, have I done this yesterday? No, I think I have done one row of trees per day. So I just picked it up like over the weekend. I just said to myself, I need to work on this now. Um, and so I did. And, you know, it's partly faster because I've memorized the color work pattern. Well, not really, really memorized, but I just go back and see what I did here. It's, it's not very, um, difficult. Um, yeah, and I just um, want to get this done. So, <laughs> yes, I am aiming to get this done before Christmas this year. And I hope I will really do it. I'm now working on the fourth row of trees, which will be the last row of trees before the heel. And when that is finished, I hope it will fly off the needles. Um, yeah, and... This is my pretty bag that I'm keeping it in, which was a souvenir from Indonesia um, years ago. Um, and I, I'm always really inspired by this bag. And I'm, I've probably shown you before, but um, you see the fabric on the back? Like this panel is the same panel as, as what's used here, but then here they've embroidered all kinds of embellishments on it, and I think that is so inspiring. Like, see this? They've turned that into this. I mean, I'm just so inspired. And also this crochet edging, like, I want to do that. Ah, uh, yes. So, I'm fun just finding, uh, inspiration everywhere. Um, my second project, which do I want to show first? I'm going to go with this one first. I am making, very careful, uh, ta-da! Many of you have guessed what I am making. I posted on Instagram showing this and uh, many of you guessed that I was making my reindeer again. Where is there a hole? There. Okay, I'm making my reindeer again and if you don't know my reindeer it was in the Yarn Folk Bookazine which is the seventh issue I want to say, no sixth issue and mine is right on the cover here you see that little face? So cute. Uh, let me find the actual pictures inside as well. So I made these, was it one year ago now? Probably a year and a half ago because we have, um, yeah, it was, it was published a year ago. Yeah, there it is. So cute. The sleeping reindeer. And I love that it, has, that it has been made so many times. Um, so I, this is uh, from Escapius, uh, which is the yarn company that I uh, often work with, uh, and I'm very happy to work with. And uh, this uses their yarn, Escapius Gatona, which is 100% uh, mercerized cotton. It's really nice to work with uh, about like a 2.5 millimeter hook so it's really really nice for um, for like dense amigurumi and um, 
because with commissions like these, you know, I make the sample and then I send it off and then, you know, I don't have it anymore. And um, I was loving seeing all of your makes because if you don't know, um, Scapius, they have two Facebook groups. One is for the Dutchies and one is for international folks. Um, so English and Dutch basically um, and a lot of people have uh, made reindeers and they tagged me in their posts and it was just so great and also on Instagram uh, a lot of you tagged me in your posts and I, I just that's so so nice um, to see um, to see my pattern being made by so many people and um, yeah I never have that many um, finished objects of a pattern um, but the sleeping reindeer was one of the really really popular ones and um, I get tagged in it all the time. Same with my Shif Rainbow blanket. I'm so happy uh, whenever I see someone working on my blanket uh, or my uh, rabbit hole cardigan I'm just you know there are a couple of my patterns that you know I'm lucky enough that people make all the time and I'm just so so happy and uh, yeah so I'm making my own reindeer again so I need only five colors yeah so this little bit goes on here see it already looks like a reindeer now and then I will uh, make some arms and legs and a nose and I will embroider the sleepy eyes and then make the ears and then make the antlers out of this um, which is called coffee I think yeah, it's coffee hazelnut English tea so that all sounds really delicious and I think I think it's just called blue green or sea green and I don't know fuchsia yeah so you need these colors and yeah I am pretty pleased with it so far it's it's really really quick I've just worked on it for maybe a couple of afternoons yeah so I will be finishing this very soon and in this bag is my Stephen West mystery knit along progress so and I'm being super super careful about uh, not posting any pictures on Instagram I have posted some pictures in my stories but then always like bur blurring out um, the actual project and uh, whenever I see someone else working on the mystery knit along I'm like ah! <laughs> It's like this instant reaction like oh, no I don't want to see um, so I have to restrict my Instagram use uh, and Facebook use until I finish it um, yes and I have been thinking about posting like a uh, beware spoiler picture and then because you can't just post several pictures um, and not show any spoilers because um, Instagram will randomly show you a picture in your picture carousel which is what it's called if you post several pictures um, so the first time you scroll past it it will show you the first picture and I will say beware spoiler and you will know not to swipe and you can just scroll on and live your life but uh, the next time you will open uh, Instagram and, and start scrolling and the next time you um, come by that person's post it will show you the second picture or the third or whatever it will it will show you a different one because you've already seen the first one so because of that Instagram is no longer safe I mean it's it wasn't safe in the first place I'm not browsing the hashtag because a lot of people are just posting the pictures without spoiler um, uh, without a cover photo uh, but what I thought I can do is post uh, post a cover photo and then I don't know if you can select a video as the next photo 
but I suppose I could do it anyway. So I could record a video and then like hold up um, something that says, spoiler, do not watch if you don't want to see mystery little one spoilers. And then, you know, like wait 10 seconds and then show it because a video can last, you can have a video for up to one minute on Instagram feed. So I was thinking of doing that, but then I didn't, uh, because my cable, my knitting cable is so short that, um, you can't really see it anyway. But I'm going to say it, you know, spoilers ahead. I will, it's still safe to look at the screen if you're already looking away. Um, it's still safe. I will post a timestamp right here. So you can uh, skip to this part and be sure not to scroll the little dot on YouTube slowly because then you will also see it. So maybe have someone else skip. <laughs> I know I'm probably the only person being so obnoxious about this, but but I really, really, really don't want any spoilers. Yes. Okay, so I am working on clue three. I'm just a little bit in clue three, just like the first five rows. Um, so if you've worked up to there, you're safe. Um, if not, you know what to do. Okay, so from now it's no longer safe to watch. Just skip ahead if you don't want to see any spoilers. Okay, so I am knitting with Twisted Finch yarn and I'm almost to my second set of skeins. Um, I only have this much left of the main color and this much of the contrast color and this is Fossil and Kelpie, I think it's Kelpie. So from Twisted Finch. And so this is the, <laughs> it's, it's quite, quite big already. So this is the Starflake Whip. Oh, it looks really good on camera. I'm getting like a Wonder Woman vibe with all of those zigzags, but yeah, you can't really, really see it. So I'm gonna spread it out a little bit and <laughs> I'm gonna have to be mindful of my stitches. Do I have any elastic bands here? Yes, I actually do. <laughs> okay, let's start at the top, right? There you go. Okay. So it's called Starflake. So combination between star and snowflake, I would say. And you can really see it's well, it has a very Christmassy vibe. And I'm not sure yet if I like it. But yeah. So we had to knit some parallelograms for clue one, which is what you see up top here. And then the stripy section was also clue one. It was massive. Um, am I still holding all of my stitches? Yes. I don't want to lose any of those brioche stitches. Um, yeah. Okay, so the stripy section was also clue one. So um, the pink uh, stripes are garter stripes and then the uh, gray stripes are stockinette. And it goes all the way here. Yeah, you can actually see quite, quite good now. I really have to be careful. <laughs> I wish I had another elastic band, but I don't. So, and then after that, there is a brioche section. Okay, can I show you? Oh, I love it. So I love the brioche section, even though it was not a pain, but 
it was a lot of work. And here you can see the very, very beginning of clue uh, three, which is a short row wedge. So that's interesting. Uh, and I did make some mistakes in the brioche. I know. But it was bound to happen. So, um, so you have these hills and valleys, right? So there's a hill here in the valley, a hill, valley. Yeah. So you increase for the hills and you decrease for the valleys. But in this section right here, you can see I improvise a little bit there. Um, come on. Yeah. So here, I started off really good, I decreased. And then suddenly, I decided to increase. Mm. So, what I did is, um, I decided to make a feature out of it. So, I increased some more to make a kind of, I don't know, leaf flower. It looks like a rugby ball. Um, and so I decreased some here because I increased a lot here and you actually have to keep decreasing so it wouldn't work anyway. But uh, I didn't j just want to decrease it because it would look weird. Um, it still looks weird, but you know, I just improvised a little bit. So, so then I did that and then I did some more decreases and... Um, then I still had too many stitches, but then in the next part where it's just kind of stuck in it, I made sure to decrease a little bit more. Uh, and then, as if that wasn't enough, I also made another mistake here. I made the same mistake. So here, I've pulled it inwards a little bit. Here I also did an increase instead of a decrease. Um, yeah, so then in the row afterwards, I just decreased, um, what did I do? No, so, so I had three of these brioche ridges and I took the middle one off. I just took it off the needle on a paper clip and I will just sew it shut here. I will just kind of like weaving in an end. And by pulling that backwards a little bit, it's a little less visible. And then I just decreased the other two so that it kind of looks, ah, oh, that's okay actually. That looks okay. But I was really happy that the brioche uh, section was over because it just took a long time and um, I did not want to make any more mistakes. So I was a little bit anxious. But let's see. But I am really liking it so far. You know, and um, I've made one of Stephen's uh, mystery knit alongs before, and it was the Speckle and Pop, and it's like totally unwearable um, for me. But um, it was super fun to knit. You know, the community aspect of it, you have forums, you have spoiler forums, and then no spoiler forums. Of course, I'm in those. Um, <laughs> and uh, only after I've completed a clue, I will then look at the spoiler thread and um, see all of the pictures of um, other, other knitters. Um, uh, yeah, but I'm still super anxious because even in the no spoilers thread, some people will still post pictures like, oh, what do I do here? And then, and then they have like a super close up picture of uh, the project, but you can still see the project. Yeah. I know, I'm, I'm like 
super obnoxious about this, I know. <laughs> but, so, what I was saying, the last, um, the, the shawl itself, I might not wear it, but I love the community aspect. I'm learning so, so much from just knitting on this. I'm learning so many new techniques. I'm getting really comfortable with brioche. Um, like, even so that I might want to design something myself, a brioche. Like, I, I didn't really think that would happen, but oh, look how good it looks now. That brioche is just really... <laughs> Most of you will be like, yeah, Carmen, we know brioche is awesome. You're late. I know I'm late. I mean, I had a little bit of brioche in the um, speckle and pop, but not that much and I just love it I love it yeah so um, I just love working on it so yeah I'm really happy that I'm knitting this even though I might not wear it uh, to anything other than fiber festivals yeah uh, and I love that Stephen always supports um, indie diner indie diners <laughs> What even is that? Indie Dyers. Um, and, you know, I've been following uh, Nathan from um, Twisted Finch for a long time. And I just love his his yarns. I've... Um... Oh, did you see the video? And my Wooly Goodies video. I was wearing a yellow shawl. A couple of you have asked me about it. It was in his um, his yarn. I'll actually grab it just a moment. So I was wearing this shawl last time, and it is the Spindrift Shawl by um, Curious Handmade, with a little bit of improv. I, I improvised these, these little things. Um, yeah, but for the rest, it's... Um, it's true to the pattern. And this is uh, Nathan's yarn, Twisted Finch. It's a little bit bobbly here because I, I uh, hung it on a uh, coat hanger for too long, um, like months. So uh, there's a slight bobble in here. Uh, so that's my fault. But um, yeah, this is, was it Sky? I think the colorway is named Sky, as in S-K-Y-E. It's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. So, yeah. Um, and I also just picked the skeins from the shelf um, that I, uh, you know, the second set of skeins for the mystery knit along. So, yeah. So, Fossil, yeah, Fossil and Kelpie. And this is so cute. It is like bubblegum pink, but then they're like tiger stripes. It's like orange and yellow and brown. It's pretty. And this one has some blue flecks, but also red. It's really pretty as well. Yeah, so uh, that's this logo. So yes, I am really happy to be working with his yarn. You know, supporting indie dyers, supporting Stephen West, an independent designer, and then also supporting a local yarn shop, Stephen and Penelope. It seems like I was a little bit optimistic about the amount of light that I would be having <laughs> this afternoon, but it's a little after five, so I think daylight is fading. So I have to get a little, how do you say that, a, a little wiggle on? <laughs> I've been watching too many British podcasts. Uh, you can not hear it in my accent, but you can hear it in my vocabulary. I have to get a wiggle on. Um, anyway, what was I going to talk about? So I talked about the 
mystery knit along, reindeer and Christmas socks. Right. So I crocheted some squares, which is not super exciting by itself, but I um, used my own hand dyed yarn for it. This is a DK wool um, that I dyed with Matter Root, and I love this. Um, so I crocheted some squares, and I did not only um, dye the wool, I also made my own crochet hooks or my boyfriend and I made our own crochet hooks um, we have been oh, I left the book downstairs um, so there's a new book called handmade you'll have seen it on my Instagram feed um, I'll also post a picture here and um, so there is a new book, Handmade, by my friend Jessica, and uh, it's only in Dutch. Um, I don't know if there will be an English version, I really don't know. But um, in there she has a tutorial on how to make your own crochet hooks. And I thought that was really fun, so we um, went on a walk to, uh, <laughs> to uh, collect some sticks, <laughs> and then uh, we let them uh, dry and we made some crochet hooks so i'll show you them in the order that we made it because then it gets better and better all right so the first one i made is this one which is too large but i wanted to keep this detail which makes it look like a harry potter wand i think that's really cool um so yeah it's not oops wasn't showing it correctly so it's not perfect uh, it's um, not quite smooth enough so yeah I have to work on that um, but then my boyfriend made was it this one or no, this one was his first one and I actually used this one for the um, squares because it works really really well and I would say it's about a 5.5 uh, millimeter hook And then this was his second one, which is it's just amazing how fast um, he got the hang of it. So yeah, his hooks are really, really well made. And then I made this one. <laughs> um, so I'm more, um, I really like collecting uh, unusual sticks. So yeah. It really um, is nice and ergonomical. Yeah, so it's uh, really nice to work with actually. And um, But I cannot take full credit for this hook because my boyfriend finished it. Um, and then, oh, this was from the second day. So the second day he made three hooks. This one, I made that one, yeah. So he made these, which are of course perfect. Uh, I'll show you my fave. It's like super thin. I think this would be like a uh, four millimeter. It's really um, difficult to get thin hooks, uh, thin wooden hooks. And to get them smooth enough in the um, neck, so to speak. Um, but yeah, actually, um, I really like working with them. Although, you know, I have to choose a little bit more uh, chunky yarn that I would usually uh, use. Um, but then this one I made, I'm really, really pleased with how smooth this is. I mean, um, so I think I spend about 45 minutes on one hook. Just like sanding it like crazy and yeah but um, I'm really really pleased how this one turned out and the wood has some really cool um, um, patterns I don't know like I really like it in some places the bark is like completely uh, sanded off but then in some places it's still um, still on there so 
I really like it. So I wanted to show you. <laughs> Yay! Hi. So it's the next day now. Um I had recorded another couple of minutes, but it was just too dark. So um, I thought I'd just record it again because the, sh the colors just weren't showing up correctly. Um, yeah, so here I am. So <laughs> I wanted to show you some yarn that I dyed. So was it last weekend? No, the weekend before. Um, uh, we went to uh, my in-laws for a birthday and then we also went on a walk together and there were a lot of acorns all, um, you know, on, on the ground. Um, so, and I remember that you can die with acorns, but I was kind of like looking it up on my phone while we were walking and then during it I was like, yes, we have to pick up these acorns. And, um, and one of us was on a bike and you know as you do in the Netherlands and uh, uh, in in the um, this doesn't really matter we had some empty um, empty plastic bottles so we just um, filled up three um, 1.5 liter bottles all with acorns so they were like I think 1.2 kilos per bottle and um, yeah so I tried at a dye bath and so let me show you the color that acorns will give you. This is um, really warm sand, sandy, like caramel type colorway. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's just like a warm beige, light brown. So it's not really super special, but I do really like it. Um, it could be a really nice base color. Is it showing up correctly? Um, like, they make me think of cookies. So, of course, um, I'm naming these Eggos <laughs> to go with my Stranger Things theme. And then, um, um, the most spectacular thing about acorn dyeing is that you can add iron and get a really different color. So um, I put these in the dye bath with um, four other skeins. So six uh, skeins in the dye bath and um, I took these out. So these are the original color. And then when I put the iron in, it turned gray. And a beautiful gray. Look at that. I wasn't expecting such a beautiful gray. So I dyed two skeins uh, of this in my sock rami yarn. This is also sock rami, which is it's rami sock. No, uh, my all natural sock base. It's eighty percent wool not super wash or anything and 20% Rami which is like a plant fiber and it's really strong so it kind of substitutes for, for nylon so great sock yarn I am keeping these two but I've dyed uh, four more uh, yesterday and they are pretty much the same color so because I'm planning to do a uh, sweater. I'm planning to knit the Ember sweater by... Oh, I can't remember. I'll put her name on the screen. Um, I don't want to guess because that's disrespectful. But um, um, yeah, uh, she has a beautiful uh, sweater pattern called the Ember sweater. And there's a cowl going on at the moment. It started October 1st. I think it's running until January. So I'm using these as the base color. I have uh, changed my color um, color scheme, color combination a bunch of times. But I think I'm going to stick with this now. So I'm uh, using these as the base color. And then a, a very light white. This is my what's for dessert uh, colorway. Um, it has a slight like peachy tone. Uh, so I really like it. So it's not quite white. Uh, so that and yeah. 
kind of a grello. I think that will look so nice. And um, just to add a little hint of Carmen in there, um, <laughs> I thought to also use these two purple minis. This is a purple and green one, so beautiful. These are from Beehive Yarns. I picked up a set of five minis from her, and these are two of them. And I got them at Yarndale last year. And I think if I use them, this color combo will be quite nice. Quite nice. Yeah, so I'm planning to use those, but I will have four skeins of this going into the shop. So that will probably be my first big quantity <laughs> of yarn. Usually I only have like two or th like only one skein because I'm really impatient or not impatient. I just want to make the most of a dye bath. So I put all of my bases in. Uh, also to kind of experiment to see what it looks like on different bases. I also put um, some mohair in this um, acorn bath. And on mohair, uh, I find that the colors turn out a little bit lighter. Yeah, but still really, really pretty. I really love these. So these will be going into the shop. And then uh, the dye bath wasn't, well, still was very saturated. So I thought I'll put in a couple more skeins just to see. But um, I actually had never added skeins into a dye bath when it already has been modified. So it was an acorn dye bath modified with iron. And I think usually they don't suggest that uh, you put in skeins after that but you know I did and I left it for a bit longer than usual just to um, just to really uh, soak the colors through um, this is my 100% merino base which is also a non superwash base all of my yarns are non superwash um, and only one of my bases which you will see in a little bit has a little bit of nylon but uh all of the other bases are 100 percent natural um and this particular base already has the tendency to take color lighter uh and it was the second dye bath of this material so it turned out really light but it's so beautiful really just beautiful silvery gray and uh, I'm calling this the Silver Cat Feeds. Um, if you have watched Stranger Things Season 3, you will know the reference. But yeah, beautiful. So yeah, this is going to be called the Silver Cat Feeds. And you know, I have a gray cat. So I was thinking about calling, oops, calling this color Momo. It actually is a little bit darker than Momo's fur, but yeah, I would just love a colorway named after my cat. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I really, really like these. And then a couple of weeks ago, actually, I went, I also went on a walk um, <laughs> with my parents and um, I saw some dock leaves. And they're really big leaves. They grow in bushes and I collected a few. And we used this dye material to get a kind of like mm, light mustardy brown uh, during the uh, gold decay dye retreat. So I was expecting like a yellowy brown. And then I got, oh look at this. <laughs> So I, um, I got a bunch of leaves and uh, I only put in two skeins. So I knew it was going to be saturated, but with, with fresh plants, I don't really want to take any risks. So, um, and I know that yellow, if you put in too many skeins, it will be like very light and I already have a lot of light yellow, um, 
in stock. <laughs> so, uh, so I thought to just experiment and only put in two skeins. I don't remember what the ratio was. I'm not really organized when it comes to that. But I really love this color. It's like a lemony uh, yellow. This is more, like this is even more lemony than this. Um, oh, it's just beautiful. I'm trying to find like references and just in case it doesn't show up on camera. Um, I don't know. Yeah, like a little bit darker than a lemon from the outside. But not as soft as like banana. No, it's not banana. Or maybe, I don't know. Just, uh, I'll try to get really good pictures. <laughs> But yeah, so this is my, uh, the only base that has a little bit of man-made fibers in it. So, um, uh, this is 75% BFL, which is blue-faced luster, and 25% nylon, and it's a uh, light fingering, so it will be great for socks. Yeah, the way it shows up on the screen, I'm not sure if the color is correct but oh, so pretty and then this one is uh, 100 meters per 100 grams so it's very bulky it's also very thin in places you can see the difference a little bit it's a single ply so this would be really fun to knit with just knit stockinette or maybe cables that would give a, a really gorgeous effect just you'll get a really textured um, make from this. Uh, it will also work really well for a weaving or a needle punching. Um, yeah, just all of those crafts where you want a little bit of texture. Um, I have a couple skeins here. I only, uh, I only bought a couple to start with. Um, yeah, so there's a couple in the shop. I think one is purple and then one is pink and yeah just very pretty yeah so those are the skeins that i dyed i haven't dyed as much because i was uh just trying to focus on other things but still you know i think it's really really fun oh actually look at these together that's fun i mean they're different bases but hmm, i might have to dye some of these colors in the same base yeah um yeah because i have just been focusing on um my business and what do i want to do with it how do i want it to grow and um yeah i've just been uh, focusing on that and it's been really really good um before i go i want to show you one last thing um i did <laughs> I did a woolly goodies video last week I don't know uh, and I forgot some yarn that I bought it was in a bag somewhere <laughs> and um, I had actually uh, if you follow my Instagram stories you will have seen this I went to my uh, yarn shop um, I mean the yarn shop that I the very first yarn shop that I went to um, and it was near my childhood home and uh, it was where I uh, bought or no I, I got the yarn as a present for my very first uh, cabled sweater yeah even then I was like go big or go home um, you know why make it easy on yourself when you can make it harder on yourself so but you know I always love a challenge so so I, uh, I got the yarn there and um, the owner, uh, who is called Lon, um, it's um, a female name here, um, it's a male name in America, I think, but um, uh, she 
just gives amazing advice and she helped me all the way through uh, the sweater project. I did not have a pattern, I just had a little stitch pattern for my stitch dictionary and she helped me create a whole sweater around that stitch pattern. She's amazing, she has the best tips, like even for, um, even if you have like relatively stupid questions like, oh, how many balls for a shawl, you know, like, what shawl, you know, there are so many questions, but you know, she just has the best advice and just really great ideas. And uh, she was having a major sale. Um, she, um, even though the yarn shop has been active for so many years, um, she still wants to get all of the new yarns in. So she has a lot of stock of you know old yarns uh, and she did a huge sale uh, of like one euro a ball um, and so naturally I went by <laughs> and um, sorry for the crinkling and I got some uh, yarn um, some of it has no label but yeah uh, so I got some mohair <laughs> Um, this is actually has a label. It's from Schachermeyer. It's called Pushka and it's 50% mohair, 50% acrylic. It feels reasonably soft. Uh, I think, what is it, 150 meters for 50 grams, so it's a sport weight. Um, oh, that is so cute. I have to show you this. It actually, on the label, it shows like a wool wash bottle or something? See that bottle? <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's probably like... Oh yeah, it's a cold... Cold wash... Uh, yeah, cold wash detergent? I don't know. Oh, that's so cute. Um, so I'm, I got five skeins, five balls of this, so they look like pancakes. Um, I'm gonna try some dyeing. I know that it's 50% acrylic, but I'm just gonna try. Um, I'm sure it will turn out. I'm sure it will have some color, let me say that. So I got that, so that was a whopping five euro for all of that. And um, then she also had these and I don't know what it is. It's part wool, part probably acrylic or polyamide. Or... It's very bulky. Oh, it's like felted. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I'd say this is an Aran weight or something. How many plies is it? four ply and it's a um yeah i'd say that color is accurate it's like a um gray green and how much were these i think like i think they were like 150 <laughs> so yeah i think they're 100 grams and I got seven skeins. <laughs> yeah. And I'm hoping to make like a cozy cardigan with this. But I have no idea what the meterage is. But seven skeins, I should be safe. 700 grams, I should be safe. So, yeah. First I was thinking, ooh, I could design a cardigan, but uh, I think I know better by now than to design a cardigan with mystery yarn. Um, like, I don't even know the yardage, so I'm just going to knit something. Maybe it will be my own pattern, maybe it will be someone else's pattern, but when I put out a pattern, I will be sure to use actual still existing yarn or at least a known yardage and then last thing I got they also had like super cute embroidery kits 
and I got this frog. It's so cute. So it has like, does it have the, yeah, it has the fabric and, and the threads. Oh, and even a needle. Yeah, so I think that was really, really cute. Yeah, so if you're living in Limburg, uh, this yarn shop is the Woolhook in Bonningen. And uh, I would really, really recommend you check it out if you're um, around. Uh, like maybe if you're on a day trip to Hormons, you could uh, make a stop there. I mean, it's just a great yarn shop. Um, they do close during the um, during noon, around noon. Anyway, um, yeah. So that was what I still wanted to show you and I will leave you now. I will go and edit this podcast and I hope you all have a great time. Um, thank you so much to all of my patrons for supporting me. If uh, you also want to support the podcast, please go ahead and look at my Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash newleafdesigns. I am really working really, really hard on the Colorwork Confidence Masterclass, which is happening behind the scenes. And um, I have just edited the first two videos and um, with many more to come. Uh, so I'm hoping to post the first video next week. Yes, so keep your eyes peeled. It will be available on my Patreon page from the Rosewood level, which is the $5 a month level and uh, with bonuses for my Willow and Elder patrons. Um, all of the tiers are named after uh, Harry Potter ones, just so you know. <laughs> um, yeah. So yes, thank you to all of my patrons. Uh, check out my Patreon page if you want and have a really nice couple of weeks and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Carmen while editing. Uh, I forgot to mention, uh, so the Colorwork Confidence Masterclass is kicking off next week, Saturday, which is November 2nd. And uh, for those of you who sign up to be a patron, um, for the Rosewood Willow or Elder tier, uh, from now till next week, November 1st, those of you will receive a special bonus, which is a live video, uh, which I'll be mm, filming probably two weeks after. I still have to work out the details for that. But you'll gain access to an extra video in which I will tell you uh, a couple of quick tips to uh, improve your color work, uh, how to improve your gauge. You know, if something isn't quite working out, I will have some quick tips for you and you can ask me all of your color work questions. So it'll be kind of like Q&A. So all of you who sign up to be a Rosewood Willow or Elder patron between now and November 2nd, so before November 2nd, those, those will receive the bonus. So if you want to get on this train, on this confidence class, then be sure to sign up in time because I really don't want you to miss this. It is a great bonus. So um, yeah, that was what I wanted to say. Be sure to all also follow me on Instagram and sign up to my newsletter so you'll know when the first video goes live and all of the details. So yeah, okay, I'll leave you with a bonus video of Momo. 